Hey guys, Joe here. Thanks for checking out another video on the channel. I've been watching my analytics and based on the number of new subscribers and the number of views going way up again, I'm guessing that YouTube has seen fit to stop super restricting my recommendations. So to all you new guys, welcome. To all you old guys, welcome back. To all of you that haven't all the use. Hey, you know what? We're going to talk like this now. For all the use that ain't signed up yet, you should probably get on that, okay? Yeah, all right. But yes, I really appreciate all you guys coming back and keeping me going and keeping me motivated to make these videos. So give yourself a thumbs up by giving me a thumbs up. That's called trickery. Anyways, let's take a look at what we have in the case here. This is a product from Smith & Wesson. At least I hope so, because it's in a Smith & Wesson box. And this was at my local pawn shop, Bears Trading Post, Winchester, Virginia. Check them out. They do more than just firearms. So you can buy all kinds of stuff, records, guitars, all that good stuff. Check them out. Tell them I sent you so that they know that uh, giving me a deal is working out for them as well. So they'll treat you fair. They're nice people. And they get fun stuff for reasonable prices, such as this. Smith and Wesson, yes, that's right, S and W, M and P 2.0 45. Yes, 45. For those of you that have been here for a while, you'll know I love 45 ACP. For those of you that haven't, I like 45 ACP. This has been one of my most favoritest and my most coveted that I've had for a while. However, I am selling it. But this is a Springfield operator in 45 ACP. I like the classics. Also, this one's going to a good friend of mine, the guy I got the high power licensed firearm from. Jakey, you enjoy this and you treat this as nicely as I did. Going back to this, this is a second generation M&P, so it has some changes from the first generation, but there is one or two things that some people say is not an improvement, and we'll take a look at those as we get into it. But first, why don't we take a look at the box? I always skip the box. He sometimes skips the box. Does he skip the box? Let me know how many times I've skipped the box. Inside the box, you do get two magazines, and this particular version of the gun is a 10 plus 1. So let me know if it's a California DOJ roster kind of a thing, or if it's just what they decided to do. But nice cut foam inserts, mags, or excuse me, the manual and the lock is back there. And you get a total of four back straps with the M&P 2.0. I think it was three total with the original. This is welcome and it's nice and it allows you to get a pretty pretty comfortable grip on the gun that you might not have been able to achieve with a fixed back strap system holy cow i almost couldn't say that also last video i said etc like 50 times and i wanted to punch myself after the third one so if you hear me saying that a lot reach through your computer and punch me all right Go ahead and move the box out of the way and get back to the firearm the smith and wesson m p military and police what it stands for, was designed to compete with Glock on a level that it has kind of achieved. It is a very popular law enforcement sidearm. However, the military went with the SIG P320 a la M17, M18 instead of the Smith & Wesson. It was submitted. It just did not win. Of course, neither did Glock. The M&P 1.0 in 9mm and 45 are very good shooting guns. This is a bit of an upgrade. Like I said, one or two things are considered setbacks, but we'll talk about those throughout the video. I've had the M&P first gen 9mm. I've never had the 45 first gen. So this is my first experience with a M&P in 45. I've had plenty of full steel Smith and Wessons in 45. Overall, I like the look. It slightly changed from a Gen 1. Number one, the most notable thing, no beaver tail. The 1.0s, the frame itself has an integrated beaver tail, which does help if you have generously proportioned hands. I am six foot four. I am. I am six foot four. I do. I ham it up. But I'm six foot four. I don't have very meaty hands. I'm trying to find a polite way to put it. I don't have oversized hands. I'm not a uh, high calorie citizen. Let's put it that way. So I've never had a problem with slide bite on full size guns. Now I've had some itty bitty crap pocket guns that I will never carry that bite the hell out of me, but not these big guys. As you can see, even full back, full back, the slide doesn't even come close to biting my, the web of my hand, and I'm all the way up on the gun. So that's a benefit to people that might have generously sized hands. So the beaver tail, while it did help, it's not necessary on this design. I do like the upgraded textures much better. The Gen 1 was kind of, 
it was okay, but it was like a soft kind of uh, texture that you could easily slip off if you got your hands super wet. This is more like Taurus and a few other brands that have gone to the sandpaper style. You want to hold on to your gun. The point of a gun, if you're going to use it in self-defense, is that you need to maintain control of it. It doesn't have to be the most comfortable thing in the world. If you're carrying it inside the waistband, you don't like that rubbing up against you, get a better holster. That's all I can say. Has ambidextrous slide lock slide release. I believe the Gen 1 did as well. All of a sudden, I can't remember. And it's pretty easy to hit. Obviously, uh, I chewed off my fingernails because I have a nervous tick that makes me do that. And I don't like going to the doctor, which I had to do today. But if it weren't for that, I could pretty easily drop it on this side. But yeah, that's, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it, Margaret. This does have one really good upgrade, and that is the fact that it has steel inserts. You can see the serial number on my gun is up here in the rail section, which it wasn't. It was a plate, I believe, under here on the 1.0s, or was it back here? Let me know down in the comments. I sold mine. I do that a lot. Common, replaceable guns. They go away so that we can have more fun stuff for the channel. But anyways, that steel insert makes this a little bit strengthened. It also adds a couple of ounces to the nose weight, which is always benefit when it comes to a 45 ACP. 1913 style dust cover with a three slot rail system. So it is nice. You can put your lights, lasers, bazookas, small children holding knives, whatever you want to install in there. And you can just kind of have them hanging out. Uh, generous trigger guard, in fact, compared to the 1911, much larger. Much, much larger. So you can get a gloved hand in there very easily. That takes us to the first point of maybe not such an improvement. That's the articulated trigger. It's not the greatest trigger in the world. It's better than a Glock trigger. Fight me. I don't care. I'll fight you. But it's still better than a Glock trigger. However, it's not as good, in my opinion, as a nice Gen 1 trigger. Excuse me. I had a hot dog. But yeah, it's not bad. And it is the only one that out of the dry ice on Garantham functioned through the freezing test. The pull is pretty decent. One secondary benefit that I didn't mention is the fact that this one can fire without a magazine in it. Gen 1 45s have a magazine disconnect. Gen 2s do not suffer that fate. Available with manual safeties, if you would like to have an additional layer of safety with your guns, you can get them. However, this particular one does not have it, just has the articulated trigger safety. Learn gun control. Yeah. Slide serrations are very nice. It's a scallop pattern. I've liked it on their 1911s. I like them on here. Very easy to grab. They added some up here. You can grab it if your hands are stronger than mine. However, I just lobster pinch it and do the old press check that way. Yeah, I bumped the camera stand. I'm a noob. I've only been doing this for seven years. The magazine disc, excuse me, magazine release is not revert, excuse me, it's reversible. It is not ambidextrous. So it is one-sided, strong-sided out of the box, and you can reverse it. Magazines do drop free. Yeah, not bad. I don't know why all of a sudden my brain just stopped. It's probably because it's the third time I filmed this. The sights on it are a three-dot setup on this particular one. However, they are very readily available. Again, highly modifiable gun, lots of aftermarket support. I might wind up putting night sights or I might wind up selling a gun. Who knows? We'll see what happens. All depends on how much it bores me or enthralls me. Got to take it to the range before we do that, though. Make sure you subscribe so you can see all those videos. Has a ejection port lockup or chamber lockup, but it is still a short action tilting recoil system. Has a hole there so you can see around if you have a brass or a high polish round. Roll pin for the ejector on the side there. These back straps come off very easily. You just twist the bottom of the back of the grip, pull out the emergency stabby stabby, and then you can just pull the grips off. They have a little tab up there, which does have to go back into the back strap first. And you can see the minimalist construction. Actually, if this had a super thin backstrap, I wouldn't mind trying one of those. But yeah, you can just do this. Some guys will uh, invest and get a competition style backstrap because I believe the competitor backstraps will fit on here. So you can get like a brass one if you want to add even more weight to the gun. Why would I do that? Simple physics. The heavier the gun, the less felt recoil. Look it up. Yeah, let's talk about the trigger pull. So make sure it's clear. And the... Trigger comes back to a wall. You can see it's quite a long distance. It's not short like I'm used to with 1911s, but for a polymer gun, it's still a smooth pull and then just breaks. 
four pounds, four and a half pounds on this one. It's probably got a lot of rounds through it maybe, but as you can see, the reset is right back at the brake. It's not short, but you can hear it. You can kind of feel it. If it wasn't 11 o'clock at night, I could probably feel it a little, little bit, a little bit, a little bit better. What do you say we take her apart? Okay, let's do that. Go ahead and make sure it's clear first. And you are going to need a secondary implement to aid in it unless you have teeny tiny fingers. Because up underneath the ejector is a small metal tab that needs to come down. I find a pen is the perfect tool for it. You can just barely see it because of the light underneath the ejector. Once you've done that, come back here. Drop your takedown lever. I have oiled this gun just because I thought it was sticking a little bit. But yeah, once you've done that, you can more clearly see right here. This metal tab needs to come down, otherwise the gun will not come apart, and it does affect reassembly as well. There's a simple way to get it to go up, though, and we'll talk about that later. The takedown is captive, and it does not appear to come out easily. I think it's part of the chassis system. Yep, in fact, it is. So you can see there, you'd have to knock out the roll pins to remove that whole thing. This metal insert is under the plastic, so that steel is embedded in the frame which does aid in the longevity of the material as well as it keeps that weight forward. Does that make sense? It shouldn't. If it made sense to you, you need a cookie. Yeah, overall, very nice. Yeah, that can stay there. Has a captive guide rod in this one, which I do appreciate. Being a used gun, I cannot always specify whether or not your gun will have the same parts, but this one does have a captive guide rod that is made out of metal. Again, more weight over the nose, helps with felt recoil. Barrel comes out just like pretty much every standard striker fire gun. Four and a half inch barrel with very good lands and grooves. You can see if I don't do that. There you go. Very defined, so that thing should spin that bullet like a top. Well, actually, you want it to spin like a sideways, because if it was spinning this way, so it was coming out. Eh, moving on. Has the, like I said, locking, tilting action that uh, most striker fires have, so it uses the top of the ejection port to lock up there, and it doesn't use a swinging link. It just uses a little bit of travel on a cam style. Inside the slide, you will see that they did a little bit of machining in there, took out a little bit of metal there, probably to balance out the slide. Those dots, I've been told, are manufacturing code. Cool. Uh, back here, you do have your firing pin channel. There's your striker, and there is your drop safety. Yes, this gun does have a drop safety, which is fine. What happens is when you pull, and with that down, it won't fire, so we're safe. But when you pull back, this moves up, activates the drop safety and allows it to fire good design yeah overall good construction makes a good ting ting good metal so reassembly is exactly the opposite and you can just make sure that the big end is back here small end goes up front yep yep my hands don't work very good so I make things look harder than they actually are half the time. You don't have to worry about popping that up yet. Go ahead and start your slide. Make sure your lever's at 90 degrees. Bring it back, lock it open. Believe it or not, just inserting a mag will reseat that piece. So once you've done that, do that. You can drop the mag if you want since it doesn't have a magazine disconnect and you can make sure that the gun fires. Yep, we're good. So what do I think of the Smith & Wesson m 2.0, 45 caliber, handgun, polymer, steel, that stuff. Um, it's pretty cool. I like the way it feels. I kind of miss the Gen 1's integrated beaver stale, beaver stale tafty because I think it made it look the gun better. <sighs> English. I think it makes it look better when you have a nice integrated beaver tail onto a gun. Uh, one thing you will see, though, you can get a lot higher on this bad boy than you can on this bad boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I hope it shoots well. I think it will. I'm used to the M&P 1.0, so maybe the 2.0 will surprise me with how well it shoots. Uh, the weight balance is pretty good. 
Uh, let me know if you own one of these, what you think of it. If you sold yours because you had a reason you didn't trust it. If you've put one of those Apex triggers in there and you like the way it works, let me know that. And uh, yeah, come back for more videos. I have a couple more that I'm working on, including a, another 1911. Huh, go figure. The boy likes his 1911s, as well as a couple other kind of interesting handguns. So that's it for today. I'm Joe. This is the Jiminy Show. This has been the Smith & Wesson m 2.045. And that was Gravity. As always, I'll talk to you later.